This simulation looks at the arrival of COVID-19 patients into my hospital, or it could be a general healthcare area. We then see based on the amount of beds we've got, how many deaths we're likely to have, and we can experiment with changing that configuration to see if we can prevent any unnecessary deaths. To configure this, I'm first of all gonna change my expected arrivals by clicking the arrivals button. What I have here is the number of arrivals expected each week, starting with the current week. Um, you see that this ramps up uh, to week 27 or 28. If you want to change this, um, you can simply uh, input any new arrivals. So I can just click here and type in a five. You could equally copy and paste this from Excel. The next thing I want to do is configure my beds. So I'm going to do this by pressing the settings button. Here we see first of all the number of purpose-built ICU beds that we have. These are the spare beds that we expect to have, not including the whole ICU ward, but those we expect to have available for, for COVID-19 patients. So right now I have four. We then say what is the chance of death if I am in one of these beds? And we know there's uncertainty here, so we've allowed three inputs, the lowest likely chance, the most likely chance, and the maximum likely chance. Um, so you can edit these. And 0.2, for example, equals 20%. Um, so these should add up to one. The next input I've got is how many temporary surge beds I have. These are the beds that aren't specific ICU beds. They're not purpose built. It might be a different facility. It might be different beds from a different area in your hospital. So I've got 14 available here. And I've said there's a slightly higher chance of death if you get one of these beds. And that might be because you don't have the ventilators and that sort of thing. The final input is the length of stay in days. So again, we know there's uncertainty here. So we've allowed three inputs. The lowest likely length of stay the most common and the maximum. These numbers shouldn't ever really be the same. So if you do input that, it might show an error just because it's trying to fit this to a distribution. Now I've configured my simulation, I can do a run. I'm gonna do this by pressing the run button. As the simulation runs, some charts are updating. The first chart here is showing how many beds are used in my purpose-built ICU beds and the one below is how many temporary surge beds are getting used throughout the year. You'll see that as the arrivals ramp up, the amount of bed use ramps up and we actually only use our temporary surge beds for a small portion of the run. Uh, on the right, you'll see how many deaths we've had in those beds and you can see that there's a breakdown below that of where those deaths have occurred. There's an assumption that if there are no temporary surge beds available, then the patient is just going to die. So make sure that there's enough there if you don't want that to happen. We can run this as a trial and what that's going to do is do multiple runs and give us back an average because as we saw, there is some variation in the simulation. So I can press the run trial button and what that's doing is doing five runs and then reporting back the average. So You'll see here that we now have 117 deaths. Um, in ICU, we have 54.8. So that's a decimal just because it's doing an average. Um, the charts are actually just showing the last run. Uh, so the numbers at the bottom here are the ones to look out for for the, uh, the total amount of deaths. So right now in the, this configuration, we have 117. This gives us a chance to now do some experimentation. I could see what if I have more arrivals than expected, what if I have less arrivals than expected. What I'm gonna do is see what if I have more beds, more purpose-built ICU beds. I've seen that also I'm only ever using around nine temporary beds. So of these 14, I'm just gonna move four of them across. And let's say I've got the ventilators and everything else I need to effectively make them purpose-built beds. So I've increased the amount of ICU beds and I've decreased or repurposed the number of temporary surge beds. If I rerun this with a trial, you'll see that actually the total amount of deaths has decreased significantly. 
uh, we now got an average of 102.8 deaths. There are obviously a lot of things that I could add to this simulation. I could add staff, I could add ventilators. Um, so if you have any ideas or you think anything um, that we could add to this would be useful for you, do let us know. Also, all of the data here is a placeholder just now. If you have any better suggestions for what the placeholders should be, again, please let us know. My email address is at the bottom of the simulation. Thank you.